So it's been an interesting uh, couple of months as we have been working together now um, since, well, just before Christmas, unofficially, uh, and then fish- officially rolled that out then to, uh, to the public um, of what our plans, our intentions and our growth strategies have been. Um, but getting to know each other now on a, on a different level uh, has been very, very interesting, hasn't Very it? interesting. Good <laughs> fun. Um, people have thought that we were actually friends before then we've announced that we've, uh, we've yeah, gone into business together. together. Yeah. Um, we wasn't. <laughs> we do like each other. It's not that we're not friendly. Uh, but no, but it's not like we grew up together. Or it's not like we've ever worked together or anything like that. You know, I hired Helen as a coach. Um, and it was I obliged. The, yeah, one of the best investments I've ever made. Um, and I, you know, that was a personal investment because I wanted to improve and I wanted to grow and I was ready for change. And um, it was great working with you as a client and then getting to know you when we you know we stopped coaching in an official capacity. Um, and then it was months and months and months before the conversation of what do you want to do next and where do you want to go? Yeah, and that decision was obviously down to you. I had this planned. <laughs> Yeah. Um, without sounding too calculated, yeah. but um, from a strategic, get my words out, from a strategic level, when I was coaching Lauren, I saw all of your, um, you know, your strengths. Uh, I really saw that you would fit well into the business. Uh, you bought into the business values and the ethos. It was so, yeah, it was, cause I was, it was so easy for me to align with you because it wasn't a, a change from a core perspective. I think from my end, you know, I, I was so lucky because I'd had a really great, you know, two and a half, three years in, in the role that I've just finished up in. Loved the company, loved the people, uh, loved the industry. I'd just come to the end of a line where, you know, that was as far as I could go. And um, so it was a bit like, um, you know, still loving a part of your career, but knowing it was the right time, you know, to take on a new challenge. So it, it took me a little bit of time to like get over a breakup and then be ready for something new. Um, but I, you know, I'd, I'd had in my head, you know, I'd been self-employed uh, at the start of my career, then taken a step to work, you know, as an employed person in a contract role, um, in, but with other self-employed people. So I've always been around entrepreneurs. You know, my dad's an entrepreneur. Lots of my family are entrepreneurs. And um, so for me, it was just a dead natural conversation. But I'd had then the safety, you know, of a very nice salary. Uh, you know, I mean, the laugh that we had in January, I'm like, you know, no one put any money in my account this month. And, you know, that was a, that was it's a, a hard check. realization. <laughs> that was a fun one to, a hard realization. you know, get your head around. But, you know, I think the thing that I've enjoyed the most in the first couple of months is realizing, you know, how much we do align in not just our, our vision for HEW, but our vision for random stuff that we've got in common. Uh, our love of putting chilli on every bit of food, you know, <laughs> breakfast, lunch and dinner. You can yeah. add chilli to that to improve that food. That's Absolutely. a good one. Absolutely. And I never knew uh, that Lauren's favourite film was the same as mine, which is Pretty Woman. I mean, it's pretty, uh, pretty we cheesy ought, one. We, ought, we to ought to have a film night, though, where we recite all the words. Every word. That we would be very, very competitive over that, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> and that is the other weird one. Is I used to think I wasn't very competitive. Oh, my God, um, she is. I'm, and and it's in like, I, knew I, I knew there was a competitive part to me. But, you know, again, I had other people, you know, in my professional life or even in my, you know, my friends, my family, who were super outwardly competitive. I was just inwardly competitive. And I think as I started to strip away some layers of, like, you know, my self-limiting beliefs and, you know, the opinions I was holding of myself because of others. And I was like, oh, no, you know, it's okay to admit you're competitive. And, oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, one of, you know, one of the core values of HW is um, individuality. And I have not brought Warren on because, you know, we are similar. I've brought Warren on board because we are very different. Yeah, although we share a lot of um, values and we share a lot of beliefs, you know, we do look at lots of things very differently. You know, this being one of them, you're so good on social media. Um, you're so comfortable, you know, you're, you know, there's no hesitation. For me, you know, this is massively out of my comfort zone. I'm used to being the other side of the camera. But you wouldn't think it, would you? I mean, come on. Yeah, but it, it, for me, it like it, you know, the person who can't see behind the camera now, you know, I'm literally, you know, coming out in hyperventilating rushes, you know, <laughs> thinking about getting in front of it. But um, don't worry, you will have lots of practice. I imagine so. I imagine so. But I think for me, it was coming from the fact that I can really relate to people and um, whether you're newly self-employed whether you've been running your own company for a long time and you know that you need to get online you know you need to create content you know you need to share stuff i was used to being behind the banner of a big brand and yeah. a big company yeah you know and the leaders of that company their vision was what was being spoken about 
you know, their promises and their goals, all those things. I was happy to stand behind them and push them on social media. But, you know, it's, it's scary, I think, for everyone to stand up and just be completely honest and completely open about what you're doing uh, in your business. And, you know, also knowing that you need to sell. I suppose that's something, again, we share in common. We both came from sales roles and I'm dead comfortable selling. And again, this was something over the last year or two, I realized like I really enjoy selling. Um, but the key is obviously selling something that you're passionate about or that you believe in and that you're comfortable with. Um, nobody, you know, um, I think enjoys selling something that's average. And I suppose that's where it's got easier for me, you know, to speak, you know, openly about the work that we're doing together, about, you know, my other business ventures is that, you know, we're passionate about it because we believe in it. And it's, you know, it's really us. I mean, it's multifaceted. Uh, Stop and re- rewind on that it's multifaceted on on that aspect because yeah you know you've got to be passionate about what you're doing you've got to have the belief in what you're doing you can't hide behind a corporate brand when it's your own business and whether when it's your own brand you are ultimately the face of it mm. i mean i have grown hew from from it just being me people are following me as a personal yep. brand i've still got my personal brand where you know i'm i'm um doing different things off the back of my own personal name, but it's all been derived from that. Yeah. Um, and the fact of, it comes down to confidence. You talk about the camera, you talk about social media, it's confidence. And with with growing confidence, and this is what I try to get across to all of the clients um, and the people that are attending workshops and the social media workshops that we do is, that it is all based on application and practice, practice, practice. Mm. And with that, and through the process model that we take you through, mm. and which you're very, very familiar of, and obviously have, have come the whole circle of it, now we're just leveling up in different ways, is, with that application and with the continuation of that process through the momentum, through gaining the results, actually increases your confidence. People think that confidence is just kind of a decision that you just make overnight. And people have said that, you know, in so many different, like, you know, professional capacities and, you know, in your personal life, oh, but you're just so confident. You know, people say to me, you know, you must be fine walking into, you know, a party or a networking event or whatever it may be. And I go, no, listen, I get butterflies like everybody does. You know, I still get that social, like, awkwardness. And, you know, anyone who gets to know me, if I'm socially awkward, you know, I'll I'll talk really fast. And it'll be like lots and lots of words. You you do that anyway. I know, but it gets worse if I'm socially awkward or nervous. And again, that's something for me, as, you know, I came through my personal development and my own coaching, is just going, everybody gets those butterflies, everybody gets nervous. Um, It doesn't mean that you're not good at something. It doesn't mean you're not confident. And also, I think people think confidence means loud or confidence means, you know, a lot to say. You know, I think a lot of confidence is inner confidence and it's just knowing, you know, knowing in yourself, you know, what it is that you can do and knowing what you can achieve, knowing what you can apply yourself to. You know, some people are extrovert confident. There's lots of introverts who are fantastic at what they do and they're very confident and very capable and very able, but they don't want to stand up and shout it out. I mean, I suppose that's where we probably have different outlooks, maybe disagree at times um, on things like, you know, documenting stuff on social media. Um, well, you never did throughout any of your um, oh, no, I coaching heard. background yeah, through yeah. working with me. I'm like, document what you're doing, Lauren. So yeah. we back to then kind of back pedal a little bit yeah. to bring the story up to up to relevancy yeah. so that so that you know people can relate and because suppose- that's what it is down to sorry that's what it's down to in terms of relatability how you resonate with that other person yeah. how have you got kind of common values yeah. and you said to me mm-hmm. uh, when you're watching me through social media if i haven't if i hadn't have been present been confident been loud been whatever it was you wouldn't have been able to buy into me no it's, and that's the thing it's such a contradiction because i know it but it's taking that step yourself and having that um, confidence again to use the same word but I suppose if people are watching this and they're thinking well what does that actually mean for me or what does it mean for me you know to work with a coach or how do I sell myself or my business or my products online and um, you know when I've worked one-on-one with people you know even over the last six months you know the way I describe it is the social media platforms that we have is your shop front mm. you know you don't have to pay for shop front on the busy street in your city or in your town you don't have business rates you don't have to pay you know for lots of staff and you know be dependent on footfall social media is there for everyone now and that's your shop window but imagine you had a great shop window in the busiest street in town but you put nothing in it mm. and I think that's what so many oh, people you were never open. yeah and so so many people do that they're like yeah I've got a Facebook yeah I've got um, a LinkedIn I've got uh, an Instagram account and then the other thing is what do you share on it yeah. share a picture of my kids or share a picture of me drinking you know with my friends or and you think that 
that is what you're putting out there for people to know about you. And I've been, you know, so guilty of that as a person. And I suppose, yeah, it's really been something that I've learned from you is that, you know, it's okay to be yourself and it's okay to promote your business because, you know, it's just, that is what it is you're doing. Stop hiding, stop hiding it. And yeah, get out there and be proud about what you're doing. So yeah, already learned a lot from that. But again, we still have different perspectives, you know, you know, you, I think you'll probably always be one end of it and I'm, you know, get, getting closer to that end of it. But you know, looking at things from a different point of view. But again, that's just one element of it. You mm. know, we are very, very um, knowledgeable and experienced in different different ways. Yeah. Um, and as, as I've said before, you know, I wouldn't want another one of me. I don't promote cloning. Um, and I, I wouldn't want a best friend to bring in that's, you know, going to be a yes person to mm. me. I need you to challenge me. We I want to challenge and you. challenge each other already. Like, yeah. You know, I want different things bringing to the table. Yeah. I'm a businesswoman. I, I, I'm not looking for friends. You know what I mean? If we if we get on and we have a good time out of it, then yeah, then that's great, a bonus. But exactly. Like, let's not get this mixed up here. This it's is not, a, this yeah. is a professional decision. Yeah, and I think the thing for you as well is very brave. You've built a brand that's you know it was your personal brand at the very start, and you know you've built it as a business brand. But to bring someone else in, you know, it is a massive risk because they can influence. You know other people's perception they can have an influence on you know we, we do a lot with the strategy we do a lot about how we you know how we build a business not just in the yorkshire region but then over to manchester and greater manchester globally and um, with my last couple of years you know uh, in digital and you know working with different website um development different app development uh, working with massive teams remotely doing everything online and um, you know we do look at things and have um lots of similar goals but different ways of attacking it you know i'm such a process uh, person you know I spent a couple of years in project management so for me it's you know God I love a list Good, because yeah <laughs> uh, you know love lots of tasks love lots of detail love a brief you know love a storyboard when it comes to content all that stuff but then you what I think what's good for you to balance me out is listen all those plans in the world are brilliant but you know get off your ass and make it yeah. do it and then share it <laughs> yeah I suppose one that straight away is like yeah. that's that's your domain that's my domain yeah like, exactly i know i've got to where i've got to with the business and the brand excuse me <clears throat> by just taking action yeah um some things have been strategic but other things has just been literally just being consistent keep yeah. showing up keep doing this yeah. i've known what i've wanted from the brand and i i, I have huge visions yeah. But I'm very, very different to you, as you know, in terms of them putting plans in place and processes and systems. Yeah. Like all of that is kind of, that's all the intricate detail that, that now is needed yeah. to take the business to the, next, the next level. level. I think that's where I was dead lucky uh, working as an entrepreneur myself early on. Like I was taught how to run a promotions company. I was given checklist after checklist. Um, and at times, that you know, it's funny you said about clones. Um, you know, sometimes you can feel that way because you're looking at it from just that first person perspective. Now that I look at it, I go, thank God I had all those processes. Thank God I had all those systems because I would have blown it up immediately without them. But then you've got to go the other way and go, listen, having a system is good, but you've also got to go where you go. You've got to know you know when to go off course when to do something different when to try something new uh, but then go back and look at the plan and go are we still on plan at all or are we on you know another planet altogether no i think i think we've got a good thing going on it's going to be uh, exciting as as this year continues to unfold um you know the reception of bringing lauren into uh, the business has been very very positive um, that we've been out and about meeting different businesses, meeting different clients, been to business exhibitions, networking events, and you'll start to see even more. Um, so yeah, I think people are, are starting yeah, to I wake mean, up to the force now of, uh, of what we can both bring to the table. And it's been great to be welcomed, you know, especially into you know, Sheffield and Rotherham and Barnsley in the region. Yeah, you know, you've only been, I think that's something that maybe people don't always realise. You've only been back in this part of the world, you know, for what? A year? Just over. Just over a year. You know, the network that you've built up here isn't something that you've had because you've been here for, you know, five or ten years. You know, the coaching I did with you was in London. Um, you know, and it was me travelling up and down to London, you know, every couple of weeks and spending that time with you in the network you'd built down there. And I suppose replicating that in Manchester as well. Um, you know, I've been back in Manchester now for quite a few years, but spent, you know, most of my twenties outside of Manchester. Um, but it's great now that I think, weirdly, again, one of those weird things we have in common is that we both ended up back in the city that we, we, started, from. That we, that we started from. But neither of us think that'll be our final destination. Neither of us think, you know, you know that's us till retirement. You know, we've both got <laughs> very big plans in terms of places. New we York, wanna, 
travel Sydney. to, places we might want to live. You know, I've got a massive goal to make sure that I spend at least, you know, eight, ten weeks a year living somewhere that's warm. Manchester isn't renowned for that. So I do need to have somewhere that doesn't rain South all France. the time. So, yeah, it's, um, it's interesting to see the differences and the similarities as they come together.